Hey, what's up, Schnell? Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by a gnarly donation of a sealed copy of an album I've gone over before. If you can hear it, you know what it is. But, hello and far away hails. This was actually written at 03.52 p.m., Pacific Standard Time, Vancouver, Canada, May 31st. Damn, that was a long time ago. Not really, but kind of. You are in luck. I found an OG sealed copy from War on Music label and a few other random gems to go with it and some old Dutch snacks. From a faraway follower, Jacob. Hails, dude. Got some good, uh... Well, I, I haven't tried the pickle-flavored potato chips yet. That's kind of gnarly. I might actually do a video on it. The ketchup-flavored chips, I, I think I did a video on those before. They were kind of good. Like... They're not something I would go out of my way to, like, buy if I lived in Canada. Like, and even in uh, Pennsylvania, I think hers has a collaboration with Heinz Ketchup? Ketchup. Ketchup? Ketchup. But now they have a collab with uh, Heinz Ketchup, and, yeah, like, that shit, it's okay, but, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the gimmick chip, unless it's ruffles, sour cream, and as much as I hate cheese, that sour cream and cheddar, it's just so perfect. But, enough talk about potato chips, let's talk about fucking God flesh. Street Cleaner, this is a 1994 cassette edition a usa cassette edition from the new york office originally 1989 earache records if you've ever seen the film altered states which i would hope all of you go out of your way to see or are fans of the film but uh yeah that movie is insane, and this is where this gorgeous cover art comes from. And right here, you have the lyrics to Like Rats with this just awesome photograph. The Swan's early extreme error worship of God Flesh is just so good. I love it. I love God Flesh, period. Like, it's just, this is one of those records. I don't know why I don't have it on vinyl. I have, like, the live stuff. I know I pulled it out yesterday, which is kind of weird. Because I think I even mentioned how I don't have a physical copy of Street Cleaner. But now I do. Because I still stand by that my favorite recording is... The Peel Sessions, because they're just amazing. And John Peel just... I mean, this split to begin with, I know it's no longer a split. I brought it up yesterday. Now you have to buy these separately, but, like, come on. Carcass and legit the best Godflesh recording, in my personal opinion... Like, for real, Earache, that's a savage, just greedy move. I, I think that's... Like, I get it, you know, not every Carcass fan wants to hear God Flesh, but, like, I, I don't know. I just think this is, like, the coolest split ever, and I stand by that. I know I say it all the time. Because, like, it's Carcass and God Flesh. Like, that's a gnarly split. But 
when it comes to street cleaner, it's so ahead of its time, I think. Because, uh, like, e even when I was a little bit younger, uh, one of my older cousins told me, like, because uh, I was a big Nine Inch Nails fan, and uh, he told me about a... Uh, a ministry record, I think it might have been, uh, The Mind is a Terrible Thing to Waste. I, I, I really don't remember, but I know it was like, it had that, it was like, yeah, but I don't know that much about ministry off the top of my head, except for that dude, Al, is in it. I don't know, but, uh, anyways, like, I remember, uh, him saying, like, oh, if you like, you know, Nine Inch Nails, because at the time, the Downward Spiral hadn't came out yet, so, like, it was Pretty Hate Machine, and I, I really liked Pretty Hate Machine, but, uh, my cousin was like, yo, like, if you like this, like, check this out, and I remember, like, distinctly, there was a couple Godflesh songs on that mixtape because like when i got a little bit older and like bought this myself like just because i, I kind of had like vague recollections of like liking what i heard but i didn't really know like what it was i just like remembered like because when i was younger i would really go all out when i would get a mixtape like i would make sure like song titles would be in one color, band names would be in another color, so I wouldn't get confused. Like, that shit, you know, like... I was in charge of making mixtapes for my mom's field hockey, like, uh, exercise, like, segment of their practice. Like, so, like, they would, you know, be, uh, listening to, like, Slayer and Iron Maiden and shit, like, because I kind of have free reign. My mom was like, just put, like, up-tempo songs that don't have curse words. I was like, okay, like, <laughs> fucking A. So I got a chance, like, even at, like, a young age, like, I was, like, probably at this point in sixth grade. And, like, I remember distinctly, like, I know it's, corny but like i put like run to the hills like on there and i thought it was cool because i was like ooh, like i wonder if any of these like girls even know who iron maiden is and like i remember i put like some misfits tracks on there and again at the time nobody knew about the misfits like when it came to like they, even in my school i became friends with like one of my best friends ever because I was wearing a Danzig shirt, and he had a Misfits shirt, but it, it was one of the OG Crimson Ghost shirts that doesn't say Misfits on the back. So I instantly, like, knew, I was like, yo, I was like, where'd you get that shirt? And then I had a three-quarter sleeve, like, Danzig shirt, and he was like, where'd you get your shirt? And we just became friends like i remember i hung out at his house and then i told my friends i was like yo i met this like dude lou like he's into the same shit like we are like he's a big misfits fan he's got uh because he had like the mis the misfits box set and like it was a big deal to like watch the vhs tape and we all like went to his house and like watched misfits live vhs and I had a friend when we got a little bit older that would like let me borrow like cannibal and exploitation films and we would gather at Lou's house and get bloody. <laughs> like, you know, watch some gnarly films. Hails to Mike. I'm sorry what you're dealing with when it comes to Booth Tube. Like all he's trying to do is get a Lady Terminator video done. If you're not subscribed to Mike the Horror Geek, it's just the Horror Geek on YouTube. 
yo, it's the best. To me, it's the best channel on YouTube. If you're a fan of like horror, gore, exploitation, and very dry humor, it's it's fucking great. Just like God Quest Street Cleaner, it's kind of timeless in its own way. And I love just that orange font. It's just glorious. But I do need this on vinyl, and I would love the Live at Roadburn edition also, but money doesn't grow on trees, and those are both expensive releases. It's not like that shit's cheap. I'm grateful, Jacob, that you sent this cassette. Like, you have no idea how much this record means to me, just personally, and just to be able to listen to it every day again is just a big deal. Like, I had the CD version a couple of years ago, and I let a friend borrow it, and same thing with the self-titled, which I kind of, it would be nice to have the self-titled back, just to make even, like, a dub out of it, or just listen to it in the car. Like, I love the self-titled Godflesh, but, like, as I've gotten older, I've come to really like, you know, even the new, like, I really like the last, uh, like, Godflesh record. The Return EP was amazing. I got to see, like, Heizu live when he was doing, I don't know if he's still doing Heizu. I know he was doing, like, JK Flesh for a little bit. But, like, getting to see Justin perform, like, Heizu songs and stuff, that was so amazing and i think uh conqueror had just came out the album conqueror i'm not talking about the band conqueror i'm not talking about this i'm talking about a beautiful shoegaze record by heizu i know some people say it's jezu it's heizu jezu it doesn't matter it's just justin broderick and to me justin broderick has the worst luck live. Like, I watched him drop, like, pretty much the entire, like, ambience and, like, all the samples and everything. Like, he just seemed kind of nervous and, like, he was setting up his laptop and it was like it was in slow motion. I just saw that thing just fall over and, like, took like 25 minutes to get it like back hooked up to the PA and shit and I like you could just tell Justin was like getting frustrated but they still it was a great set and stuff and I think it's one of the reasons I still get decibel periodicals because I uh, kind of helped the publisher out um, along with Albert he um, they kind of had like, passed out from the heat, and, like, kind of grabbed him, I was like, it's like, he was in front of me with Albert, and all of a sudden, he, like, fell back, and I remember, like, I kind of grabbed him, I was like, oh, and I, because it was so loud, I, like, tapped Albert with my other hand, I was like, yo, like, I, I thought maybe he was drunk, like, I, really, I didn't know, but, uh, yeah, it was just from the heat. Like, we took him upstairs and stuff, and, like, made sure he was cool, and then, like, I still kind of feel bad about going back down, but, like, it was, like, a once-in-a-lifetime show for me, like, seeing Heizu, but, like, I remember, like, I was in, like, total addiction mode when Godflesh did their comeback tour, and I remember seeing, like, the show coming up. It was at, like, my least favorite venue in the city, but I was like, you know, if anybody can get me out of this, it's God flesh. And I was on my way to the show, because it wasn't sold out yet. And I was on my way to the show, but kept going those extra three exits, and yeah, didn't make it to the show. And I legit regret it.
if you get to see God flesh, like if you have the opportunity, I know they, I think, I think they just played Hellfest. I'm not positive in France, but if you ever get a chance to see God flesh, do it. This is the original drum kit from hell. Like, it's so oppressive. I love this drum machine. Like, it's just awesome. And listen to that bass tone. Dirty. This whole part is so sick. First press, but a 1994 cassette press, and yeah, made in the USA, Earache Records, Mosh 15, 1989 and 1994. I legit, for the first time in my life, kind of felt bad about. <laughs> Uh, like unsealing something like this because it was sealed and I was just like looking at it but I was like the music meant to be fucking listened to like I'm not some shelf warrior that just has tapes that sit on the shelf like no like if I want to listen to some like savage bestial putrefaction it's right here next to Conqueror if I want to listen to some sadistic drive, boom. If I want to listen to some Were Goat, like I could see what I've been listening to kind of recently. It's a Hellhammer, Ceremonial Bloodbath, Corifragrium, Eye Gouger, Vicious Blade, War Victims, which I need to go over soon, Vomit Rot. This fucking rules, but has nothing to do with God Flesh. So, back to God Flesh real quick. Because, like I said, to me, this is an absolute gem of a record. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. This is a bona fide classic, in my personal opinion. Uh, you might hate it. I fucking love it. But, um, you know, you have, the ma you have The Machine, a.k.a. the original drum kit from Hell on Rhythm. G. Christian Green on Bass. Justin Broderick on guitars and vocals. And that's what I think is so awesome about it. And then you have Paul Novell on a guitar on the uh, second side of things. I forgot about that. All the visuals are from Godflesh. And it was engineered by Rick Pet or Rick Pete. Not positive, but you breed like rats. Don't look back, you were dead from the beginning, stylized deformity, this is my own hell, Christ bait, slug bait, rise and bring you down, Christ bait rising, bleed dry mankind, feel free, I can refuse room, blank, clean, screen, you can crush me as I speak. Right on rocks, what you feel, now feel this truth. Misuser, death dealer, abuser, motherfucker, effortless. We'll pray together, you taught me, and now you slay me. Vision, escape, we all die. Life, our life is expendable. Corruption in the goat herd. Flesh crumbles in the real world. Yeah. Godflesh Street Cleaner, one of the most oppressive, heavy albums when it comes to extreme music, and especially the 80s, where most people were in the clubs, you know, dancing, when you spin me right round, baby, right. nah, 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 
this is, like I said, one of the most oppressive recordings next to Swan's public castration's a good idea. And that's a bold statement, but I'll stand by that. Thank you, Jacob. Seriously, heaviest of hails. I have no idea how even... I don't know how War on Music had a copy of this, but wow. Thank you. Seriously, like, thank you. Because, again, that album means a lot to me. But, as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. If you made it this far, you also mean a lot to me. Hails. Yeah.